Hi everyone, this is Carrie. Today's video is actually a throwback to a video that I made about a year ago and I just happened to not upload it and then wasn't sure really when to upload it, but it's Vidita, so videos every day. So here you have a video of me interviewing a high school friend of mine and his experience about coming to Korea for the first time. You'll hear him talk about saunas and driving and kids and beer and everything else. So enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> I'm here with my friend Joel, old friend from university and uh, a fellow... High school, technically. I can start over. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to cough. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. The lean back is good. I am sitting down with my friend Joel, old high school friend of mine, and fellow living abroad expatriated Canadian, perhaps we can say. Mm. And Joel came to visit Korea earlier this year. Not actually to visit me, to do work, mm -hmm. and then the visit was part of that. So this is a video to discuss some of his impressions of Korea. So I suppose the, the beginning was seen from the windshield of a car, having suffered some minor jet lag in the flight. The sun was setting and you had the beautiful night sky. What season were you there? May. May. Late, late April, beginning of May. Okay. And you could tell that it was extremely mountainous. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely breathtaking. So the landscape impressed you? The landscape impressed me immediately. Okay. And I also enjoyed the infrastructure by car was very slick, very uniform and consistent and very modern. Mm -hmm. And it was like that throughout the whole country. Mm -hmm. I found a very nice uh, infrastructure. How about um, the speed of driving? Um, Driving presented a, f a few challenges. I myself am a bit of a cautious driver, and I was a bit like perplexed when uh, I first, for instance, saw someone drive through a red light, and mm -hmm. um, it baffled me because I just I couldn't fathom the entire concept of going through a red light. The light mm -hmm. is red. Uh, it's just you can't possibly go through it. Mm -hmm. That to actually see someone just not even slow down and go right through it. I, I couldn't believe it. There seems to be an unofficial rule that if there is a car in the intersection, it doesn't matter what color the light is, you can follow that car. So if it's within the box, then you can keep following. If it's already part way through? If there's a car part way through ahead of you, yeah. you can just go in, even if it's red. Oh. And this seems to be a, a, um, a an expected rule amongst drivers that mm. You don't wait until it turns green, you wait until the last car has cleared the box, and then you may proceed. They have artificial speed cams, and yet everyone knows where they are, and there's many of them. And consequently, drivers alternate rapidly between going 160 kilometers an hour and the speed limit. I found that to be quite a, a bizarre a bizarre thing. You get used to it in the end, you drive with the cars when they all slow down, then you should also slow down yourself. How was your experience interacting with Korean people? I found that to be just marvelous. The people were, were very warm and very open and very excited to meet me. And I was at a, a tea field and uh, someone approached me calling me a model and saying, model, model, come, come. And I had no idea where this scam artist was taking me. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out that he wanted me to pose in his picture with his friends because I was so pretty. That, uh, Didn't he tell you that? Yes. That was the strangest <laughs> thing. We were going to the, uh, the largest cave in Asia, mm -hmm. and we were climbing up, and it was a bit of a climb, and on the way down was coming about thousands of children who were returning from a field trip. On this single path up the mountain, there's a thousand school children all in their school uniforms running down. The entire way up, it was just constant reactions. Everyone would notice us, notice that we're not Korean, mm -hmm. and then have some kind of a reaction. Some would like uh, hide, look, hide the old hide, the whole the old hiding <laughs> one. Others would sort of look and then look away and pretend like they hadn't seen anything. Others would be like, oh, and then start whispering. Some would uh, point and laugh. Mm -hmm. Some would say. Hello! Some would say, how do you do? A complete spectrum of reactions in some way our presence 
affected everyone yes. who saw us, which was basically everyone on this very narrow road. Yes. At the top, there was a, a gentleman who was asking us where we were from. And he was, in English? Uh, no, in Korean. Oh, how and, do you know that he asked you that? Um, well, so he was talking to us, and we were, we were saying, no, we don't speak Korean, and then he kept going, and no, we don't understand anything. So finally, he went, Korea! And I was like, aha, Canada! His response afterwards was, ticket checking man! Which, oh. I guess that uh, someone had taught him how to say that phonetically. So did he check your ticket? Oh, he checked our ticket. What would you say about meals and food in Korea? <sighs> yeah, I yeah. know what you mean. It's such a visual feast because when you sit down at a table, you're immediately rewarded with an astounding array of appetizers, all of which look delicious. I, I myself can be a bit of a squeamish eater, so... <laughs> So it was nice that I had the options, that if, if what I had ordered I didn't like so much, yes. that I could at least eat on these appetizers and never have to worry. But in the end, actually, I never had a bad meal. Uh, everything I ate was just, just outstanding. Do you remember any of the meals? Soup with uh, beef in it that was just amazing. There was uh, some uh, noodle dish with black bean sauce that was particularly uh, tasty. Ah, jajangmyeon. Yeah. yeah. The only common appetizer at every single restaurant in my entire stay was the kimchi. Mm-hmm. So you said you saw a lot of different appetizers. Yeah, lots of different appetizers, but it's nice to know that you'll always have kimchi. Did you spend any time in Seoul? Yes, that's where I was attending a conference. My hotel was in the center of a district that has recently become quite famous internationally. Okay. Um, it's called the uh, Gangnam, was the, the uh -huh. name of the, the district. What I found so incredible about Seoul is that the scale is enormous and yet it's so orderly and clean and well run and it's it's just splendid. I, I couldn't fathom a, a city like Toronto scaled up four or five times and having anything but complete chaos. <laughs> like, we went to a, a nice little restaurant inside Gangnam metro station mm -hmm. and I wanted to go down the stairs. It was like a wide staircase that you could fit maybe 12 people standing next to each other. Mm -hmm. And there was 11 lanes of people coming up <laughs> and one lane of people going down. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I just will wait because like I'm, I'm not in a rush and mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to like, be in such a crowded place. I'll just wait till this rush of people stops. But it never stopped. <laughs> and it occurred to me that these are all people getting off at the metro in Gangnam and there's just a constant line of people walking from the metro out to the streets that did not end for like minutes and minutes until I finally gave up and went down into the station. And yeah. in the station it was also quite a crowded place. It was but very lively, very full of energy just yes. inside a metro station. Have you been to other places in Asia? No, this was the first trip. So um, I guess I have uh, lots still to, to witness. Yes. But I, I found that South Korea was a very livable place. I was in Gangnam at night walking home from going out and dancing, and... Where did you go dancing? At the Noise Basement. That, that's the name of it? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of it. It was pretty phenomenal. We just, like, we were walking along the river. There were some people sitting underneath a, a highway overpass playing guitar and drinking beer, so mm -hmm. we just sat down and started chatting with them. Mm -hmm. On the way back, there was um, a line for the bus. In fact, there was two lines for, I guess, two different buses. And the bus hadn't arrived. The line was just there. So they had arranged themselves into a nice queue, two queues, one for each bus. They were so long that not everyone would get on the bus. But instead of everyone just pushing their way on or crowding around and trying to get on first, they resigned immediately to their fate, went to the end of the line, and everything was so smooth and orderly. I took you to a Jim Jobang. Mm, yeah, that was a highlight of my trip. Could you describe it? Um, so, it's a... <laughs> I just remember what happened. <laughs> I was told that uh, it was gender segregated, which left me alone. It was quite nice. Lots of, uh, like, there was a nice sauna, and there was a cold bath, and there was a hot bath, and there was a high-pressure shower head that would, like, strip your skin right off. Uh, there was one guy who had wrapped his towel on the hook that normally you pull down for the high pressure and was lying down on the ground holding the, the towel to shoot high pressure at what ended up, thankfully, being his abs, because at first I thought it was not. <laughs> Lots of, uh, of adventure there. 
Um, but then we had to get on our adorable pajamas and meet in the common area. My adorable pajamas were not given to me when I had entered, and it became quite a ordeal not only to find the adorable pajamas, get the adorable pajamas, go back and change, and then figure out how to get to the common area. How did you get your pajamas? I went down to the front desk and asked for pajamas. What did you wear? Uh, I was wearing a towel. <laughs> the little towels? The little towel. You were naked? No, essentially? no. I had a towel wrapped around me. But you were still barefoot? Yeah. And bare-chested? Yeah. <laughs> she must have been really shocked. She, she acted a bit surprised. Do you remember what we ate in the ginger bun? Ice cream with fruits? It wasn't ice chocolate. cream. It's shaved ice. Ah, right. Shaved pat, pat bing soup. Shaved ice with fruits or something. In it. Yes, yes. Did yeah. you like it? I did. It was bizarre, Yeah, but it was enjoyable. I remember lying in the saunas, the extreme heated one that was inside it looked like a, the center of a kiln. <laughs> yes. Very marvelous. Can you describe a Korean bar? Oh, the one that you took us to was so cozy. Mm -hmm. Very narrow, very booth-oriented, mm -hmm. so everyone could sit down in their little three-person by three-person booth, mm -hmm. sit down, have very close, intimate conversations, mm -hmm. one light hanging overhead, a thin, narrow bar on the other side, very cheap, delicious beer. Uh, delicious? Delicious. It's not usually an adjective used for Korean beer by people who live in Europe. Huh. I actually found Korean beer to be quite wonderful, and I liked all of its varieties. Mm. So. That's great. So, would you put Korea on a list of recommended places to visit for other people? Yes. There's very little you can complain about uh, on a trip there. The food is incredible, the hospitality is wonderful, the infrastructure is top-notch, and it's a marvelous place. Great. Thank you. you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs> Do you want to say it in Korean? I don't remember. You can follow me. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Annyeong. Annyeong. Annyeong yi kese. Annyeong yi kese. Annyeong yi kese yo. Yana kese yo. And now wave and say it again. Annyeong yi kese yo.